Well, 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 John, I've got a question from you, and it's coming from one of our fans. And our fan Hold is... You've got, a, you've got a question from me or for me? For you. Did I say from? You said from. Oh, no. I got a question for you <laughs> from one of our fans. It's, I got it. Okay. It seems like XRY. So I'm assuming it says X-ray, X-rays, T-I-N-G-8923. So it was posted about you know, 20. So they're going to ask, how hard is it to work with Josh Thompson? Easiest, Incredibly hard. Easiest thing you've ever done in your life. <laughs> Easiest thing. <laughs> it says, yo, Big John, rules question. I was under the impression that spiking an opponent on their head was illegal under the uniform rules. Am uniform I Uniform or unified? It says uniform. So I'm, re okay. I'm reading it. Unified. Yeah, so the yeah. unified rules. Am I wrong? If not, shouldn't Leon have been given time to recover? Oh, we're talking about Leon Re Edwards and Bilal. Recover. Doctor called in. Was there some reason this wasn't considered spiking on the head? Yes. So, if I if I'm going to take you back in time, okay, back to when the unified rules were put into place, there was concern about some a fighter being put on their head, and that actually came from a fight that was in New Jersey, the very first UFC, uh, not the very first UFC, but the very first UFC under Zufa was UFC 30, and it was Tito Ortiz versus Evan Tanner in the main event, and if you recall that. Uh, fight Tito Ortiz gets a body lock on Evan Tanner swings him out and drops him down and has his head against Evan Tanner's and they hit the mat Evan's, Evan's head can't move anywhere and it knocks Evan unconscious and they were like oh my god we can't have this happen so I knew the one thing I knew going into the meeting for the unified rules is that they were going to talk about the Evan Tanner versus Tito Ortiz fight. This was going to be a big thing. So I, I got ahead of it by going and taking the 1996 Olympic Games and the 2000 Olympic Games, going to freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, and judo, and pulling up every throw that was done in the Olympic Games where someone landed on their head. God bless Alexander Karelian because he would gut wrench people, <laughs> pick them up and drive them straight down into the, the mat. But I, I mean, I had this at the time it was a DVD. That's what we would put stuff, something on. So it could be play on a TV. I had this DVD that had all these throws. So when it came up and it did, I said, look, let's stop right here. Let's take a look at the 1996 and 2000 Olympic games. Boom, put it in and said, let's play this. And then we'll talk. And the whole point of it was, you know, they're, they're wanting to protect someone from their head hitting the ground. Totally understandable. But the fact is a fighter can make their head hit the ground. If I do a certain throw, you know, I can make my, you know, I could take and throw you and you could make yourself hit your head if you wanted, even if I was trying to keep you from it. You know? Those aren't the smartest people, though. <laughs> well, I didn't say the smartest people, but there's the ability to take something that is completely legal and try to make it illegal Got it. and so you know we looked in and tried to explain hey this is on the the fighter being thrown has options and those options are i can go with the throw and basically most of the time in, in these types of throws that have this rotation i can help it over rotate which is going to save me i'm going to go i'm going to land but it's going to save me from landing on my head or i can try to fight it and when I try to fight it, then it's not up to me where I land. It's basically up to my opponent. But that's on me because I'm the one trying to fight it. I'm not trying to protect myself. I'm trying to stop it by a motion that is not what is in my best interest. So we go through the whole thing. And basically, in the end, it was, all right, it's not so much that the fighter lands on their head. It's that they are positioned by their opponent in a way that makes it to where they cannot control how they're going to hit the ground. They have no control over it. And their opponent purposely tries to drive them into the ground head first, like they're a tent spike. And so we looked and said, all right, any throw that has an arc to it, anything that has where you see there's that high crotch and you see his feet doing this circle as he's going up and down, you see that circle, that arc is telling you that that's going to be a legal throw. Even if his head hits the ground, it's a legal throw. And you can take a look at the first throw by Bilal 
when Leon goes, Leon has the ability to, he's got both hands free. And with both hands free, he has the ability to try to brace his fall. He's the one deciding what he's going to do. When he, when he allowed that to happen the first time, you saw the second time he did exactly what I'm saying. He took his hands and braced his fall so his head wouldn't hit. That's on him. You are there as a fighter. And one of the things that we say before every fight in the back is the last thing we say is protect yourself at all times. It is your responsibility to protect yourself. Once the fight starts, you know, you are there and you need to do everything you can to protect yourself from everything that that opponent is trying to do. So the throw itself, it was a high crotch lift by Bilal. He tilted him perfectly. And yes, he did come down and he did hit his head on the ground. But under the unified rules, that is a legal throw. Now, if you go to like one FC, which is under the global rules, that throw would have been illegal because in the global rules that the one FC follows, they say that it is imperative and incumbent upon the throwing fighter. You need to make sure that he doesn't hit his head. That's very difficult to do. And they've had fights that have ended in disqualifications based upon a guy doing a great throw, a suplex or something like that. You know, the greatest throw ever, I guess, in MMA that most people are going to look at suplex-wise, Kevin Randleman versus Fedor. And you look at it in 20 seconds after Kevin Randleman had the greatest throw in MMA history, he was tapping out due to a submission because Fedor, you know, he, he protected himself the way that he wanted to. He was fine from the throw. And it's not that a fighter cannot be hurt. They can. But one of the things that you knew when you signed up for MMA, Josh, was it's dangerous. Yep. And I can get hurt. And you you accept that. Now, we don't want to see anyone hurt. But to change the rules over to say that, oh, you must protect your opponent by you know not having these throws, people are not going to be happy with the, the sport. In the UFC, in Bellator, in strike force, in just about every you know organization I can think of that has been around, we haven't had any neck injuries during competition. We haven't had those things happen. And we've had some big time throws. You know, you can go back to Rampage Jackson against Ryan Bader, you know. Ricardo Arona. Rotation, rotation, but straight down. You can take a look at Ricardo Arona with you know the triangle you know, triangle choke. Him picking him up and slamming him down on the back of his head. Absolutely, but legal. Michael Chandler, it's a throw. Benson Henderson, the one that I remember actually very uh, is um, Magomed Magomedov and Matos. Remember him? He did basically a oh, very yeah. similar to the Fedor, absolutely. the Fedor and Randleman one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it, Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. All of these are things that happen in the sport of MMA that make it exciting. And it's all things that the fighters are prepared for. Now, you're going to get throws that, you know, people. Rose Nami Yunus got knocked out by Jessica Andrade on a throw where she basically came down kind of sideways but hit her head into the uh, canvas. But see, that was a throw that Jessica was placed into a submission hold. You can take a look, and Rose has a Kimura grip on her arm. No matter what, I'm not saying that it's a locked-in good submission, but it's a attempted submission. That's why she's locking it in. Jessica can pick her up and bring her down any way she wants because in the back, we would tell you, hey, if you get placed into a submission and you can elevate your opponent, you can pick them up and bring them down in any fashion. It is upon them to protect themselves. And I'm telling you, if you place your opponent in a submission, be it a triangle choke, be it an arm bar, any of those things, and they elevate you, it is incumbent upon you to protect yourself. If you want to go, and you know, back a long time ago when I was a kid, Disneyland had e-coupon tickets. Those were the exciting rides. All the other ones were boring rides. But the, if you want to go for the e-ticket ride, then hold on to your submission. But if you end up getting knocked out, you're going to lose this fight. If you want to protect yourself, let go of the submission. 
you know, and continue on in the fight. It's your choice. You're the one that's in control of that position. So you have to protect yourself. So when Rose got slammed, you know, a lot of people, and I think a part of it was because she's a female. They don't like seeing, you know, the female, you know, competitors get hurt the same as the men. It's just different. It's not, but in their mind it is. And they said, oh, we need to change this rule. No, bullshit. The rule has worked and it's worked well. Obviously, people can get knocked out. We had two fighters in the UFC almost back to back on arm bar attempts getting picked up and slammed. Mm -hmm. Both knockouts. That's their choice. They have the ability to let go of that submission. They decided not to. And the end result is they got knocked out. That's why the fight wasn't stopped. That's why Leonard Edwards was not given time and no doctor was brought. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play. But stay hydrated and stay salty. Yeah, there's like submissions and like jujitsu tournaments for kids and this and that. Like you can't get slammed, but if you're in a submission, I can pick you up and elevate you and drop you. But you have the option to let go of the submission. So technically, it's not my fault that you held on to it all the way to the end. <clears throat> like if if no. I go to slam you and you let go, then I'm in trouble. But then you wouldn't have got slammed. So there's ways to work around it as well as what you're saying. Like the the Rose Namajunas, she could have let go of the submission and she would have fell differently. She Leon exactly. Edwards, they, he wasn't attacking the submission. I don't believe in that position. It was no, just, it was not. Yeah, he, but he could have put his hands up. <clears throat> yeah, he had both hands free. You know, it used to be uh, Uriah Faber used to many times uh, take people, pick them up, and have them where their legs, he's got a hold of their legs and their body is folded, you know, basically down his back. Mm -hmm. And Uriah used to jump up and sit back and put his feet out and butt slam mm -hmm. people and it was he was told uh by the you know i told him you know at, at times hey let me make this as clear as i can for you when you decide to do that you are known for taking the fighter's arm and you have their legs with one arm and you grab their arm and you wrap it around your waist so what has he just done he's locked that fighter into place I'm telling you now, if you do that and you jump up and sit back with the fighter in that position with that arm locked, that is a spike, you're going to be disqualified. Mm. If both of their hands are free, you can do that same type of thing because they have the ability to defend themselves. So one being, all I'm doing is locking that arm in, it is illegal. When I don't lock the arm in, it's a legal throw because the fighter has the ability to use their hands to brace the fall. Got it. <clears throat> It all makes sense. I mean, look, you have the opportunity to defend yourself. You have the opportunity to, to let go of the submission, to protect yourself. All of those things make a lot of sense. I didn't look at it as uh, I've, I've used that, that takedown several times. I used it against oh, Benson yeah. Henderson several times. I know exactly how the body tips forward and tips back. So when you scoop deep on the high crotch and you use your head to kind of tilt them forward a little bit, they get yeah. their feet get real light. And their upper body gets real heavy. And the first thing they do is start to go forward. Now you're stuck in this no man's land of, do I do a forward roll or do I put my hands down and defend? And that's exactly where Leon was. He wasn't expecting to be elevated that quickly and that easy. And he didn't know yeah. which way to go. He was trying to go backwards, realizing that his, that Lee, that Bilal was actually pulling his body, lower body out from yeah, underneath him. Tilting him. Tilting, tilting him and him using the head the to push yep. him forward. And he went straight forward. He got high first and then went straight forward and was like, wait, I'm so far away from the ground. I don't even know. Can I just roll through? And there was no option. It was too late for the hands and not enough time to roll not through. Not enough momentum yeah. to roll all the way through. Exactly. So he just landed directly on the head and that's got to feel nasty the next day. 
It's got to oh, feel yeah. nasty. Yeah. You could go all the way back. Go back to UFC 74 where Gabriel Gonzaga fights Randy Couture for the title. And there was a moment when Randy ends up doing the same type of lift. High crotch, beautifully tilts him. And in it, Gabriel grabs the fence. He grabs a hold of the cage. And what happens is Randy Couture's head is right in the middle of Gabriel's chest. And because of the cage grab, it ends up sliding Randy's head up even with Gabriel's head. And when they land on the ground, it's Randy's head that is on Gabriel's nose and crushes his nose, mm-hmm. breaks his nose right away. And, and Randy even said, he goes, oh, yeah, I heard his, he goes, it was right next to me. I heard his nose just crack, you know, he goes. <laughs> and so a lot of people say, well, that was a foul. That's a clash of heads. You, you know, they should have stopped the fight. And it's like, no, 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 no. When you foul by grabbing the cage, you just made that clash of heads legal because you're the one that caused it. Yeah. And so it was a legal throw with a legal use of the head. Randy didn't do anything wrong. Gabriel's the one that made that happen. And so he, that's called, you know, you get, it's considered what was a foul is now fair. See, I, ooh, that's good. I didn't know that. I would have failed your commands class because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot of all the years of you and I working together, but that's one that I haven't heard where that it's yeah, the it's fighters. True. It's the fighters fault. If, if you foul, fight. if you're the one fouling and you're, you basically become injured because of the foul, it becomes a fair blow. That's interesting. Ooh. But hopefully, See, uh, hopefully we we're all about educating people here, Josh. Well, I think uh, X-Ray Stingong or whatever it is, 8923, I think that answered your question. Hope you enjoyed it.